Welcome to another episode of Out of Spec Dave, where today we're going to be doing another EV 101 video. Today's topic, Kathy? EV charging and etiquette. EV charging and etiquette. And uh, this is an interesting one. We are going to take you through the full gamut of ways to charge your car and not only are we going to talk about it we're going to show you it's demonstration time. demonstration day it's like remember back in school what was it like show and tell, show and tell. this is show and tell ev 101 <laughs> we're going to show you what's it like to charge on a level one ac charger mm -hmm. what's it like to charge on a level two ac charger and we're going to show you what's it like to charge at DC fast chargers. And we're not just gonna limit it to either CCS or Tesla, but within Tesla, we're going to show you urban superchargers, we're gonna show you version two superchargers, and we're gonna show you version three superchargers. In addition to that, we're also gonna take you over to show you how to charge at an Electrify America CCS charger, as well as an EVgo. So we're going to lay it all out there and uh, show you what it's like to charge an electric car. So let's get into it. There are lots of different ways that you can charge your car, as we mentioned. Level one, basically think of it like you charge your car every mo every hour you're going to get around three to five miles of charge not very good because level one is charging at your house yeah it's just charging like right. at a regular like a 120 volt um outlet like you plug your tv into or a lamp or whatever mm -hmm. your cell phone into that doesn't really charge very fast but at least you can charge and the good thing about those is they're everywhere right oh, i mean like you think there's a lot of gas stations around there's way more electrical charging outlets right. it's just that they don't really go very fast it's not the optimal way to charge it's not the optimal way to charge i would agree with that now one of the things that you're going to need in order to charge at a level one station is something called evse uh, electric vehicle supply equipment and it used to be that Tesla's would come with those, the charging cables. Mm -hmm. Now they don't. You gotta like buy one. Yeah, it's interesting. Right? So you can buy one on eBay or what have you. And they're you around know, to buy. You can buy them. But you can buy them right from Tesla? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can buy them from Tesla. And and so you'll need that you'll need that cable. And when you plug that into uh, the wall socket at your house, then you can just plug the cable that comes with the car or if you buy it uh right into the car and you don't need to use any kind of app for level one or anything like that um hey there's joe there he is and uh so you you don't really all you need to do is just plug the car in and it'll charge but let's get into now talking about level one then level two, then we're gonna jump up to the big boys, right? The DC fast charging. We're gonna show you both CCS and also NACS charging and what it's like to charge a car. At the end of the day, if you're buying a car and you have the ability to charge at your home or perhaps at your apartment complex using AC, just do that. It's great. And then when you go on road trips, it's good to practice locally so that you know how to charge. Great advice. So when you get there, you're not like, ah, what do you do? But um, try to stay away from DC fast chargers if you can, if all you're doing is, is charging your car locally. And um, even if it's free, I, I Unless just- Unless you see they're empty then it's fine. If, if they're empty, then yes, it's fine. It's so- It's fine if it's empty. All right, so let's go on this little show and tell journey. Okay, let's go find some chargers. Let's go find some chargers. We'll start in our garage at uh, level one, level two, and okay. then we'll go find the uh, DC fast chargers. All right, so let's start with the most basic way of charging an electric car. You have a typical wall outlet in your house that you plug your television into, you plug your cell phone into. Guess what? You can also plug your electric vehicle into that as well. And I've got that plugged in right over there on the wall. And this is what it ends up coming out at. This is the 
NACS Tesla, um, I guess, port. And all I need to do is if I just push this little button right there, watch that, nothing happens. I go like that, there we go. Had to wake up the car. Sometimes you gotta like wake them up. It's like me on a Sunday morning. You just plug it in. And then if you come over here, you'll see this little blue light should turn to green at some point. And oh, the charging is scheduled to go on at 1 a.m. Here, let me, uh, let me change that real fast. We do that because we like the charging to start later in the night so that in the morning when you leave, the battery is warm. That's kind of an advanced technique. You don't really need to do that, but it's something we do. All right, so I just turned off the scheduled charging and you can see now that we're getting some juice. And this particular, the way that we're charging the car right now will charge the car pretty much around three miles or four miles every hour that you that you wait. So it's very slow charging. It's actually very healthy for the battery to charge super slow, but um, that's one way to charge your electric car. Now, when you step up to a level two, like we have in our in our garage, right. the Autel level two mm -hmm. uh, charger, it's still AC. Um, remember from a previous episode, we had talked about how batteries store energy in a DC format, but yet what you get out of the wall socket in your house, whether it's level one or level two, um, is, is an AC format. So what has to happen is the car needs to take that energy in and then it needs to convert that energy to DC. And there's an onboard, it's called an onboard charger that converts the energy from AC to DC. Um, when you go to charge at a level two, now in our case, at our home, we don't need to use an app in order. We just can literally um, plug, just plug, it. plug it in and the adapt the, the, the connector uh, that, that we have to use in, in, in our car is a, um, um, is a Tesla NAX connector, NACS connector. But our level two wall connector, our charger that's in the house, has a J1772. So we use this little adapter. I don't know where yours is in the car. I, somewhere we have it. Um, but you just need to use a little adapter to convert the J1772 to a Tesla. If you don't have a Tesla, then chances are your car is going to have a J1772 adapter. So you just plug that in. Now, in some cases, if you're going to a level two charger at let's say a hotel, or a place of business, depending on what you run into, they may or may not require you to pay for that charging. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, you can pay for that charging with a credit card, or sometimes you'll have to use an app. And it, it gets a little bit sort of interesting, is it the right word, to figure out how are you going to get the energy. I, what I tell people is don't worry about it. When you get there, you'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes you'll you'll find a brand new charging uh, station, a level two. I remember we were up in um, Saratoga Springs, mm -hmm. and we were at the at the Saratoga Auto Museum, and they had a special level two there. I needed to download the app in order to get the juice out of the level two. You figure it out. It takes an extra, but once you have that app for that particular network, then you're fine. You're good to go. Um, so, but also just going back a little bit, yeah. um, if you're charging at a level two at your house, which is, I think if you own an electric car, the way to go, everybody should try to install some home charging. It's only a few hours, isn't it, to get yourself yeah, well, charged up? A, a level two will put out energy, at, and I'm just going to talk um, more in terms of how many miles mm -hmm. per hour. I know that drives Kyle crazy because it should be about kilowatts, and and he's not right. He's not wrong. <laughs> um, some of the some of the cars, the onboard chargers. I think he was complaining about the new Lexus only only does six point six kilowatts, and it's crazy in this day and age. It should be doing a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. um, but you you pretty much will get out of a level two. Uh, not three to five miles every hour, but you'll get about 30 to 35 miles right. every hour, which is which is pretty good. The next way to charge your electric car 
is that if you get fancy and you want to put in a, a unit such as this over here, you can do that. Now, I just want to show you this. This is a NEMA 1450 outlet right there. And I had a professional electrician install this unit from Autel. And this unit here then uh, will power the electric car. And the reason why I bought it like this is because I can take this unit with me when we leave this house, number one. And number two, I can take this unit with me if I ever go into remote areas where there's perhaps um, campgrounds where um, you'll have this type of a, a NEMA 1450 outlets. So if we plug this in like that, then what you'll end up with on the other end of this is this J1772, which is not going to fit into the Tesla. So we have this J1772 to NACS or Tesla adapter. These things are about 50 bucks. When you buy a Tesla, this is what they give you. And uh, if you lose one, you can buy one for about 50 bucks. There are some off-market brands. Just buy the Tesla one if you have a Tesla. And what I'm going to do now is unplug the car from the 110 outlet. Put that over there. And now, let's see. We're going to roll this. We're going to get this. And we're going to plug this in. And very quickly, you're going to see that it starts to charge. So the good thing about this setup is you've got two different ways to charge your car at home. And this is using alternating current or AC. So the AC goes into the car. It then goes to this, this converter that, char that changes the electricity from AC to DC, and it stores it directly in the battery using a level two AC charger, such as the one we have in here installed at home, will charge your car between 30 and 35 miles every hour, which is great. I mean, you come home at seven o'clock at night, by 11 o'clock at night, four hours, if you've gone 120 miles, you're ready to go again. So very convenient for most people. This is all you need. And then when you go on the occasional road trip, that's where we're going to start to get into DC fast charging, where the game is, it's all over the place. And we're going to take you on a little road trip and we're going to show you level two charging out in the wild. Then we're going to show you DC fast charging out in the wild. Um, we're going to go through Chatamo, through CCS and NACS Tesla. And hopefully by the end of this video, You'll see there's so many different ways to charge your electric car. Hopefully, we're not going to confuse you. Hopefully, we're going to make it a little bit more clear for you. But um, look, stick with us. We hope you find this, this video helpful. Let's, let's go for a road trip right now and check out how else you can charge your car outside of the house. All right, so next up is the version 2. This is an AC charger, but it's out here. It happens to be a BMW of Darien, but you'll see these charge point units as an example. You'll see them, perhaps there's a Whole Foods behind us. They're all over the place. There's one in downtown New Canaan. There's different stations and some of them are free and some of them you have to pay. So come on over here, let me show you this. This is a J1772. Now, in order to activate this unit, you need to have a, an account with charge point. Now I happen to have one and I have this little card here that if I, if I click right here, hopefully it'll, it'll say, tap your phone or charge point card below. Come on, baby. Authorizing, here we go. Okay. Now, good, now I can unplug. All right, so you can see this is what's called a J1772. This is the same exact thing that you see on the back end of a, of a level one for AC charging, or even at our home, the Autel charger that we have, it's level two charging as well. This happens to be level two charging. But if you come over here, Kath, check this out right here. That If I try to plug this J1772 in there, it's not gonna work, all right? 
So what you need is you need your handy dandy J1772 to NAX adapter. And what you do is you plug this in like that, and then you plug that right into there. And this is gonna then turn from, see it's already green. Now I'm dispensing energy out and, and I'm actually getting energy. Um, this is putting out power of, let's see what I'm taking in, 0.1, 2.2 kilowatts. Now, the, the fact is that we're at a very high state of charge here right now, so I'm not expecting to get anything. I think they're, I'm not even sure if taper happens. It's 3.2 kilowatts. I think this might be a 6.6 .6 that is split in two. So, but this is how you can actually get energy out in the wild at a level two charging station. And again, this is AC. In order to stop this thing, what you do is you tap again. Come on, baby, you can do it. There we go. It just charged me $9.95 to show you this. Oh man, please watch this entire video because can you believe that? $9.95 to start, just to show you, I took in 3.2, I don't even know how much I took. Hardly any energy. That is insane. We'll put this back here. Yeah, $9.95. And I don't even know. I was plugged in for two minutes and 56 seconds. That in my example, which I drive a Tesla, um, I like to charge at home and I don't do it every day. So every maybe once or twice a week, I sort of let it go. Takes about four hours, and I'm yeah. back at my eighty percent, which is where I like to keep it. Right, and and the thing is that if you if you charge up to eighty percent and bring it down to like forty percent with your commute, maybe you could do three four round trips mm -hmm. to work That's and back, right. and then charge it back up to. Yeah. It's a wonderful convenience yeah. to have that installed at your own home. And it's also, um, it's the right thing to do, which is to leave the DC fast charging open to those people that are traveling through. Now, one of the things that I'm not a big fan of is free charging. I know. So a lot of the manufacturers will offer free charging. And if you buy a car that has free charging, you're going to have to go to a DC fast charger in order to cash in those free chips, if you will, and, and charge. And so we see a lot of locals doing that, you know, because look, they bought the car, so they get free energy. Yeah. And I understand that. What I'm saying is that the manufacturers of the cars are driving bad behavior yes. of people that have enough money to pay for electric vehicle charging. It isn't part of the, the calculus as to why they bought the car. It's just, you know, sometimes you see these guys pull up with EQSs or uh, you know, lucids that aren't on a road trip and they're just charging there to get the yeah. energy for free. Because Meanwhile, they have it. They have a level two at their house, right? I know, and but it's a psychological thing. <clears throat> it's an incentive. Or, oh, buy this car, we'll give you three years yeah. of free charging. And everybody goes, oh, that sounds great. So, yeah. And it is great. It's just part of knowing when it's appropriate to use. That yeah. Item. So that's getting a little bit off the track, okay. which is about how to charge your car. But, but part of what we want to talk about today is charging etiquette as well. And, and there's a lot of things that you don't think about when you go to the gas station. Um, it, you know, if you need to fill up your car with gas, you just wait in the line if there's, if there's too many people there. And, and then you, you, you go and you, you fill up and you leave. Well, you know, there's, it's, it's a very different scenario when it comes to charging electric vehicles because there may be a fast charger and you may plug in and be taking the energy from the fast charger and go to the mall, right? And start shopping. And then your car is finished charging. Mm -hmm. And, or maybe you really don't need to charge to a hundred percent, but you do, and you have every right to do that. But the question is, do you really need to do that or not? And, and this is the thing that I think people start not realizing, especially when it comes to non-Tesla supercharging, because there's so many superchargers around and the locations of the superchargers, there tend to be so many more dispensers of the, of the energy at Tesla than there are with CCS that, um, 
you know, it becomes it becomes a problem. So the two standards for charging, it's kind of like back when we were kids, it was VHS for watching a videotape or Betamax for watching a videotape. Sony or Panasonic were the two standards. Today, I'm not going to talk so much about Chatamo, although we will show you a Chatamo um, DC fast charger. When I say fast, it puts out uh, 50 <laughs> kilowatts, which is pretty slow. Um, you know, the fastest... Um, just to give you the range as far as the speed, think of a garden hose and think about water flowing out of a garden hose. The speed with which that water is flowing out of the garden hose in our speak with electrical, ve electrical, ve electric vehicles charging is done in kilowatts and, and very slow charging for DC fast charging is 50 kilowatts. Very fast charging is 350 kilowatts. And, and so, and it depends on whether or not your car can accept, you know, whatever the speed maximum that your car can accept. And we'll talk about that a little bit, but you know, it's, it's just amazing how there's all these different variables when it comes to, uh, when it comes to DC fast charging that, um, that we want to really kind of talk about today. So back to the different charging sessions or stations that there are. There's level one, level two, and then DC fast charging. And then there's so many different variables that go into how fast your car will charge. Again, the car has to talk to the, to the unit, say, give me accept uh, whatever the maximum amount of energy that it can accept in based on the temperature of the battery pack based on the capability of the car being able to take in the amount of energy, it will tell the dispenser how much energy to give it. And assuming the dispenser is operable and not what we call nerfed, um, the dispenser will give as much energy as the car is asking for. Sometimes it gets limited, sometimes it gets very frustrating, but um, we're gonna show you all of this today. But I wanna get back to the terminology or, or one of the sayings which is about uh, etiquette because I think there, there is a lot of people don't realize that etiquette is even at play here. Um, give me an example, Kathy, of something that someone might do that you would consider to be bad etiquette when it comes to charging. Okay. If there's a line of people waiting for a charger and the line is not as straight, for example, as it might be at a gas station. Sometimes they're in these parking lots and people line up right across from the chargers in a parking lot. Someone, and there's a line, there's like one, two, couple cars waiting. Someone may just pull up as someone's pulling out and go, oh, I got a spot. And there's four people politely waiting for that spot. So it's about having, let's call it situational awareness. Right in that realize that if all the chargers are filled and right next, right across from them, you might see four more Teslas or four other different types of electric cars if you're at the CCS network, uh, they are probably there waiting. So the right so the right thing to do there, since queuing is the issue, queuing. right, is that there's no electronic queuing system in place now. Right. And I blame the charge point operators oh, for that. I agree. But since there isn't, what's the right thing to do there? You show up and there's, you see four or five other electric vehicles, whether I it's a Tesla. Wait until that car pulls out and might stay back and just see if one of those cars is pulling forward. And that means, right? Well, That's you, what I would you, do. I'll tell you what I would do, but I'm a type A kind of guy. I would get out of my car. And I would go over to each one of the... And put the orange cone down say, that's mine. No, no. Not that. No. Well, bad. actually, that's a good idea. But <laughs> what I would say is I would get out and say, hey, guys, how's it going? Um, you know, just out of curiosity, who's up next? Right? Who's in line? And then I would establish that. And so everyone kind of knows. But I would quarterback it. That's just but me. That's, you. that's not the average person. No, I know. But I'm just that. saying, like, that would be the right thing to do. Well, and, I think what I said is the right thing, too, for the average person. You just don't jump into that spot. You wait and see if these other electric cars here. Okay. We are at an EV Go station. The thing that's really cool about this station is it has all three charging standards here. It's got Chatamo, it's got NACS, NACS, and it's also got CCS. So let me show you each one of those. Let's start with Chatamo. You'll see this is, this is what it looks like. And... 
and um, it's it's a standard that's out of actually Japan, and it's used only really pretty much on the Nissan Leafs. I think there's maybe the Mitsubishi Outlander uses it. I can't remember, but there's a, a number, just a very few cars that will use this uh, this Chatamo adapter. Um, it's a dying standard, but there still are a lot of cars out there that use it. So it's nice that EVgo has this station here. Now, one of the things that we talked about earlier was DC fast charging can go anywhere from 50 kilowatts all the way up to 350 kilowatts, which we're going to show you over at Electrify America. Remember, the fastest charging stations that Tesla has are on version 3s, which maxima, max out at 250 kilowatts. Now, this is EVgo fast charging, but guess what? It's 50 kilowatts max DC. 50 kilowatts on the Tesla charger. See, it's got NACS right here. And it's also 50 kilowatts on CCS. This is the charging combo standard. You'll see you've got J1772 here, which is the AC, and then this is the DC part right down here. And the, the combination of having both those on there is um, is what's doing. Now, each one of, one of the things I think that's pretty cute about about EVgo is that they name their stations. They aren't numbers. Every single EVgo station has a name. I'm looking for Dave. I haven't found it yet. If you know where it is, let me know. This one's called Sadie. So if you were to call EVgo, you would say, hey, listen, I have a question about why I can't authorize this unit. And and you would say, I'm at Sadie here in Stanford, Connecticut. But, you know, it's it's funny to me that that uh, that this is only 50 kilowatts. This particular station is made by a company called ABB, which you'll hear us talk about from time to time. It's not really important that you know um, which station, which who makes this actual dispenser, but there's different units that are made by Signet. Um, then there's SK Signet. Then there's ABB, and ChargePoint makes a lot of the units as well. But the ChargePoint operator here is EVgo, and they purchased this unit from ABB. This unit's been here for a, a, quite a while, uh, but what's nice is you can actually see all three charging standards here. So let's go ahead and activate, and I want to show you how you how you use this station. Now, one of the things about EVgo is we talked a little bit about plug and charge in Tesla, where you can actually just take um, the NACS, whether it's a supercharger, uh, urban supercharger, which we're going to show you, or a 150 version two or a V3, and you just plug in and it works. Some cars in CCS also work with Electrify America. For example, Lucid does work uh, for plug and charge on Electrify America. Nine out of 10 times in my Lucid, I would just plug in and it worked fine. I remember when we got the GV60, we thought that plug and charge would work at EA, but it only worked in Europe um, in, in terms of plug and charge and it did not work in the United States. So. EVgo brought out this thing called auto charge that uh, there was a video that Kyle, myself, Brandon Flash and my buddy Rob, we were in Florida trying to get auto charge. I had like two of the best minds in charging trying to get auto charge to work. We ended up being late for dinner. I got in trouble, but we did get it to work. So I'm going to try and use the auto charge plug and charge, if you will, functionality here. But in order to do that, you actually have to use an app in order to activate this. So. You can get a little card here and tap the card there. I don't have the card, I never did get it. This one doesn't have a card reader for a cell phone, or I'm sorry, for, uh, for a charge card. So in this case, what I'm gonna have to do is use an app on my iPhone in order to activate this charger uh, to, to actually uh, go. Although, why don't we try this right now? Maybe plug and charge will work. I don't think it will, but let's just see. To get started, plug in any open connector. No, nothing's happening. <laughs> so let me take a break. I gotta figure out, I, I've forgotten how auto charge works on this thing. Open up the EVgo app and you'll see that based on GPS, it's telling me that I am at um, the Ridgeway Shopping Plaza. Now we're gonna go ahead and get directions on how to, actually we're, it says pending here. I'm gonna click. All right, good. And I'm gonna to try to do the plug and charge and 
I'm going to start charging here. Now let's go ahead and. Okay. Charge is pending. There we go. Syncing be char between charger and vehicle. Preparing. Come on over here and look at this right here. It says it's preparing. That's good. Yep. And there you go. It's starting. Now, again, I'm at a very high state of charge, but that was relatively easy. Um, well, I don't think you're charging. There. Now it just clicked. No, you're not. All session is complete. It didn't work. Enjoying the app? No. All right. That didn't work. All right. Let's start it again. Keep your program reader. Got it. All right. Let's unplug. Let's try that one more time. We'll give it another shot. It did tell me that my state of charge was at 91%, so it, it definitely read what was going on there. So find a charger, plug in, and confirm your session. So maybe I need to plug in first. Come on, open up. There we go. Now I'm going to say start charging. Charger is preparing. Payment has been authorized. Now look over here. I think we've got. Well, we had that before. We need it to turn green. There we go. There it is. Now we're charging. Success. All right, good. All right, so I'm going to stop the charging session here. Now, again, that would only put out a maximum of 50 kilowatts. So now let's pretend that this was not a Tesla. Let's pretend that this was a CCS car. I want to show you how that works as well. All right. So let's pretend this was a, I don't know, Hyundai Kona or an Ionic 5 or, a, or a, any, a Taycan. You would need to use the CCS in order to do that. Now, with the Tesla, the good thing about a Tesla is you can charge at any um, Tesla supercharger or any CCS charger, high-speed DC fast charger as well. And what I have here is what's called a Combo 1 adapter that I'm going to use over to EA as well. And the benefit of this is it allows you to, in addition to charging at Tesla superchargers, it allows you to charge at any CCS charger. Why would you want to do that if Tesla is the gold standard? Maybe your price comparison, your shopping. I don't know what the cost or kilowatt hour is, is on this charger, but I've seen guys charge over here using Tesla because the urban superchargers that are over there that put out 75 kilowatts, they're not the fastest, but it's more expensive to do it over there. And a lot of these Uber guys, they're cost conscious. So they'll come over here and charge on EVgo, even though they're only pulling 50 kilowatts, it's cheaper for them to do it. So basically what you do is you just, you just plug this CCS right in. And instead of plugging that in the CCS into the car, now I've got this combo one adapter. Now what I can do is just like I could pretend, now I'm going to use over here, instead of choosing Tesla, I'm going to cho use the CCS combo, and it says to plug in first. What the heck? There we go. And yes, enroll and start charging. Plug in the CCS combo connector within 60 seconds. Well, I'm plugged in. All right, now this is, says it's enrolling in Auto Charge Plus, and they're pairing our unique vehicle ID to my account, which is which is pretty good. Let's see what happens. I don't know, this whole Auto Charge thing, the initial time we did it, it, it didn't work very well. I'm curious to see how this is going to work here at this EVgo. For whatever reason, it says, do you want to enroll in, in Auto Charge Plus? And when I said yes, enroll, I think because I'm already enrolled, it didn't work. So I'm going to say no, just start charging only. And now it says to plug in, which I'm going to do. And then I'm going to say start charging. Okay. Now charger is preparing. 
So the auto charge, I'm not sure is actually working with this car, but I'm having to use the app in order to activate it, which is, which is not the end of the world. So here we are, it's preparing and you can listen and, and here it'll click inside of here. There we go. Your session. Oh, see, it failed. It failed. It failed. But, um, I guess I could try that again. Session's complete. I could try that again to get it going, but you get the idea here. I think it's time to move on. I mean, we tried here with the EV go, not super easy. Um, I believe I could get this going using the CCS and the combo one adapter with the Tesla, but for some reason, I'm just not able to do it, but we got a lot more to do. What's another example of poor etiquette at charging stations? Um, I think another thing would be when you find the charging hose laying on the ground. The hose? The hose. Okay. <laughs> if the charging hose is on the ground, yes. Well, you always talk about the garden hose, so I okay, cool. call it the charging hose. Oh, I like that. You know, put it back in its slot, please. Don't leave it laying on the ground so someone can run over it. Right. Okay. Don't just kick it or whatever. Or just like leave it. I mean, why would you just leave it? Yeah. It goes back in a spot. All right. How, how about spot. how about if someone is charging to a hundred percent? Right, which you, you can't tell someone that they're not true. That that's their right to do that. Mm -hmm. But what happens if they charge past a hundred percent? Meaning well, that the, the the charging session is stopped yeah. and they're there continuing and just basically blocking that charger for someone else. That's bad etiquette, right? It's terrible and it's rude. All right, so here we are at Tesla Urban Superchargers, which only put out a maximum of 70, I think it's 75 kilowatts. And if you look at the cabinets over here, these cabinets are much smaller than they are at the larger units, whether they're V2s or V3s. And so the question is, why would Tesla put a urban supercharger here? And I think it's a great use case because right over there is a, is a stop and shop. It's a grocery store and we're undercover here. So even in inclement weather, if it's raining or snowing, you've got a good place to be able to charge your Tesla. And it's gonna charge at basically half the speed of a non-shared V2 and uh, it'll give you enough time to go and actually shop. So if you're, if you're sharing a V2 cabinet and you've got a 150 on a version two, then it's gonna be split 75-75. And this is basically what you're gonna get, which is 75. The way to do this is very simply, again, plug and charge. You just plug it in and usually within six seconds, you're gonna start getting some juice. Let's see. A little longer than six seconds here. Hello. There we go. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, look, these are nice. You'll find these more in the inner cities. You'll find these sometimes at malls. I think they have a good use case. Uh, the V3 that we're going to be going to in a little while is down right on 95. And that's for people that are traveling through. They're on road trips that need to get the maximum amount of energy um, that they can in order to get back on the road as quickly as possible. Whereas these, these V are these urban superchargers, a little bit less power, still DC fast charging and definitely faster than the EV go over there. That was 50 kilowatts. It steps it up just a notch to 70 kilowatts, 75 kilowatts. So think about the water coming out of the hose a little bit faster here. Let's go on to the next one, which we're going to check out electrify America. Another thing is, that these charging stations are not a dedicated place for you to park sure. your electric vehicle. I have seen charging, I've seen electric vehicles and I'm not gonna say which brand, but <laughs> a brand that might start with the letter T. Oh, T? T. Oh, I thought you were talking about the B. No, I'm gonna talk about T. Okay. They'll park there and then they won't even plug in. Oh yeah, they just think it's for them. That's my spot. And sometimes, you know why they, they do that? Because it's a great, sometimes the location of the charging spots 
are really great locations compared to where, you know, if it's a crowded mall, you might be able to park there. But if you don't even plug in and you're not even charged, that's bad etiquette. All right, so here I am plugged into an Electrify America. I used my app in order to um, authenticate and, and this is the 150 uh, maximum DC fast charger. We've got a, a Volt EV over here. Um, this is just, you know, plugged into a 350. He's pulling 22 kilowatts at an 88% state of charge, which is, um, you know, he's entitled to do that. That's fine. But um, pretty amazing from New Jersey. And yeah, look, I, I use the app here, the Electrify America app to be able to plug in the Model Y using the Combo One adapter that I showed you before. And we're able to get some juice out of here. Now I'm at a very high state of charge and I'm gonna be leaving here shortly. And at 91%, I'm pulling 31 kilowatts, which is not terrible, but um, you know, look, I'm able to get some juice out of here and, and there you go. Yeah. All right, now you were gonna talk about B bolts right or not even bolts what about hyundai uh, yeah. konas or nero's it's any or, car honestly any car it's any car the first thing you need to do is you need to understand what's the maximum amount of energy that your car can take from a dispenser under the ideal weather conditions meaning the temperature of the battery pack um and whether or not the unit can put out the much so let's just say that you're driving a a Hyundai Kona, okay, which is a great car, and 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 the fact is that the fact the most amount of energy that your Hyundai Kona can take in is seventy seven kilowatts in that range from fifty kilowatts all the way up to three hundred and fifty kilowatts. Your car is only capable of taking in seventy seventy seven kilowatts or 75, but it's basically seventy seven. That's the most I've ever seen in a Hyundai Kona or a Nero. Now, if you pull up to an Electrify America station, and there are six units there at this one station, and two of them are capable of putting out 350 kilowatts, and the other four are capable of putting out 150 kilowatts, which station should you go to? And let's say all six are open. And you have a which uh, you would have, be a miracle in itself. Well, just well saying. let's say they're they're you all would go to the one that is lower than the three fifty. Go to a so one. Would go to the one fifty. Go to a one fifty. You don't have a car that is capable of taking in that much energy. Right, and and so now if you go to a but, but shockingly, and a lot of people don't know that. Well, and the, these cars. Right, so so you know it's interesting. It's etiquette implies that you understand what you're doing wrong. And it's our hope with this, this series on EV 101, especially in this video, that that we can educate people a little bit about about their cars and about what their capabilities are. We, we kind of, in the industry, the Chevy Bolt has, it's a great little car, great little daily commuter car. Um, and even more than that, the thing will do a well over 225, 250 miles if you drive it, drive it easy. Um, and I love the bolts. I've, I've owned a couple of them. They're great, but they only charge a maximum of 55 kilowatts. That's it. And, and so, and what also happens with these cars is, is that the, when they say the maximum it can charge is 55, it's kind of like, um, we, we use the analogy in the other video about a pitcher of lemonade and an empty glass. When you fill up the, the pitch the the glass with lemonade you pour it in really fast but once the glass gets full to let's say 50 percent and you're pulling 55 kilowatts let's say it's a bolt then at 56 percent or 60 percent the car says give me less energy just like you would taper off and not pour the the lemonade as fast into the glass the electric vehicle starts to ask for less energy as the state of charge starts to increase. So to put this into perspective, it takes about the same amount of time to go from 10 to 80% in a vehicle <coughs> as it does to go from 80% to 100%. Yes. So if you really don't need to charge to 100%, as soon as your vehicle gets 
to whatever state of charge that you need it to be at in order to make it to your next destination, it's time to unplug and leave. And that's proper etiquette to do that. So one, know what the maximum peak rate that your car is capable of taking in. Make sure you match that with the the um, the uh, the proper dispenser. So again, if you if you're driving a a low like a car that can't take in a lot of energy and you have the choice of going to a 350 or a 150. Or what they call sometimes hyper fast. Yeah, the time. language is just, sort of the lowest just like I don't get that whole EA sort of branding right. thing that they've done. But 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 if let's let's say that there's all six stations are filled up in an EA and you're in a bolt and a 350 opens up, definitely take the 350 at that point. Without don't wait for the oh, 150 yes. because you're next in line. So all of these little things, I think, are are very important for us to understand when it comes to charging etiquette. All right, so here we are at a Tesla V2. This is a version two, which means that each cabinet is capable of putting out a maximum of 150 kilowatts. Now, what you'll notice is that each cabinet is labeled with either, let's say, 1A or 1B, 2A or 2B. So if you pull up to a V2, and someone is plugged in at a 1A, and you plug into 1B, then what'll happen is it'll force split the, the cabinets into each getting a maximum of 75. All right, so the one thing to keep in mind on these V2s is the fact that these cabinets are shared. Sometimes they're dynamic, sometimes they're force split. But the bottom line is that if you have a choice and if someone's on 1A, instead of going to 1B, go to 2A or 2B so that you're not sharing a cabinet with the same number. But all you have to do, these cabinets here will put out a maximum of 150 kilowatts, even if your Tesla is capable of, well, any Tesla is capable of pulling more than 150. Even my uh, rear wheel drive LFP can pull 170. But let me show you what you do here. It's very simple. You just go over to, now one of the things you'll notice is cable thickness on a V2 is, is very thick. And, uh, and all you do is you, you push this little button like that, it opens up and you plug in and within six seconds, there we go. All right, so, you know, again, just keep in mind that with these V2s, um, try not to share a cabinet with the same number with someone else. That way you maximize the amount of energy that you'll pull. Also keep in mind that if you're at a relatively high state of charge, you're, it's not that big a deal if you're plugged into a V2 versus a V3. V3 will charge at a maximum of 250 kilowatts, but just for, what do you say, Kathy, is a hot second. It doesn't really stay there that long. And by the time you hit 50% state of charge, you're really right down to only pulling about 105 kilowatts on at least a Model 3 and a Model Y. The S's and X's do have a little bit better charging curve, which is something we talked about. But uh, look, you know, this is a Tesla V2. So let's go down to the uh, Tesla V3 and Darian and check out how those work. Very similar. Um, what else with respect to etiquette? Um, well, I, this might be more of a general thing, but sometimes you pull up to a charger and, you know, there's a lot of garbage on the floor, on the ground. And I think that people should pick up their own garbage. Now, I think places are getting better now, certain charging stations about putting in receptacle cans, but just don't throw your burger wrapper on the floor. Yeah. It's really gross. No, I, I would agree with that. And you know, the other thing is that oftentimes there's a lot of new people getting EVs today. And, and I think that what we should do is if help each other, you see someone struggling, then, you know, get out and say, hey, listen, oh. if you're more experienced, hey, can I help you in any way, shape, yeah. or form? And you'll know quickly whether or not someone wants Once to take the help, help or not. not. But don't force it on them and don't be super chatty like me because I am often super chatty. But I genuinely try to help people when well, I, I can. You do. And, I and And I think that, um, you know, I've met some, some great friends over the years um, that we've stayed in touch with. Yeah that at charging stations just by, by helping them out. And by the way, it's not just um, a non-Tesla car that has trouble sometimes. I've helped several people at Tesla superchargers. Sometimes people get a new car, 
they don't get much help yeah. from the dealership and you can see that they're not really sure what to do. Yeah. So it's nice if you're nearby and you see them uh, struggling definitely to offer a helping hand. Yeah. This is the V3, puts out about 250 kilowatts. First thing you do, open your charge point. Pull out what I call the hose and in you go and i typically stand here and watch it turn from blue to green and usually it's about six seconds but look how easy that is and now i'm charging there's no app there's no adapter needed for this and it is just this i think the simplest way to go there you go supercharging so one of the nice things about the uh tesla is this plug and charge you just literally plug and plug it in and, and you'll you'll charge the other thing about these uh, these V3s is that they put out a maximum, as Kathy said, a maximum kilowatt output of about 250. We can see it sometimes 250, 252, but that's peak, and that's assuming that you've got your battery temperature at the right um, at the right temperature to accept the maximum amount of energy. And uh, but usually right around 50% state of charge, you'll be uh, you'll be pulling about 105 kilowatts on at least the Model 3 long range and, and the um, Model Y long range as well. Now, in a, in a Model 3 LFP, which is a rear-wheel drive car, and the new Model Y LFP rear-wheel drive, even on a V3, you're only going to pull a maximum of about 170 kilowatts, even though these dispensers could put out 250 kilowatts max. Now, each one of these dispensers, unlike what we just showed you over at the V2, the, each of these are capable of putting out 250, so that if you've got 2B and 2C and then 2D, they don't really get split. But this whole system over here is load balanced in the back. You've got these, these cabinets back in here, which are nicely hidden. Um, but this, all the way back in here, You've got really, that's what the, the units are converting the energy from AC to DC. So when you're pouring the energy right into the battery here, you're pouring it right in, in DC. So this is the big boy for Tesla. It's not as much energy as you can perhaps pull from a, an Electrifier America, which goes up to 350 kilowatts. But these are some serious units. And Tesla is just now putting out V4s which are going to be capable of putting out even more energy. And we're excited to see those, those units um, really start to proliferate. All right, so sometimes you may run into um, superchargers, Tesla superchargers that are called magic docks. And what those magic docks are is that instead of having this little tiny holster right here, it's a bit bigger holster and, and what, what is hidden right inside of that holster is a CCS connector. And what that will allow you to do is to use a Tesla supercharger to actually charge your non-Tesla car, car that will take CCS. So look, there's a lot of different mechanisms out there and, 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 uh, and a lot of different resources to figure out what's the right charging etiquette well, listen, just to summarize today's video on charging the EV 101 video, um, I really want to thank you for sticking with me the whole time, if you did, with both of us. Um, what we tried to do was to give you an overview as to all the different ways that you can charge your cars. There are many different um, CCS charge point operators that are, out, that are out there. Each one of them has their own um, sort of way of, char way of authorizing and paying for the charging session. Um, when you look back on today's session here, that, that charge point where I charged for about 30 seconds or less, um, and I've had to pay $9.95, it's just insane to me that they do that. You know, and then in addition, you would get a certain amount of energy for that $9.95, but then they would actually charge you even more than that for the energy that you're taking after you hit a certain amount. So, um, you know, is electric char electric vehicle charging less expensive than gas? You got to be careful out there. Charging at home is really easy. Level one, put it in, put a level two in if you can. The world of DC fast charging, it's just so simple with Tesla and it's quite complicated 
the Electrify America station, just a typical, it's a Sunday evening here on, in, in Connecticut. And it was not chaos, but um, when we were leaving there, there were two or three cars waiting to charge. One of the stations was down. And I don't know if the 350s were nerfed. That, that uh, Bolt from New Jersey, he was still on the hook when we left and he was at 96% going all the way to 100% sitting on that 350. And he was pulling, I think, 18 kilowatts. So again, these things about etiquette, is he entitled to do that? Yes, he can, but think about it. If you're really in a pinch and you need to charge to 100%, then do it. If not, then maybe make way for someone else to do it as well. So um, anyway, there's a lot to do um, with, and learn when it comes to charging, but just take it one step at a time. And hopefully this video has at least opened your eyes as to what it's like to charge an electric car in today's day and age. Best of luck to you.